going to edit that right now. When things don't go to plan is our theme for today. When things don't go to plan, let's save that and let's show that. That's the topic for the day. That's the topic for the day. Where are you all today? What are you doing? Say a little hello in the chat. Um, tell me where, what you've got planned or, you know, what I would love um, uh, because this is what I'm finding. I'm really, really loving uh having a book out is actually actually knowing, um, you know, if people are reading the book, you know, what they're loving, what they're enjoying. I'm getting some random messages through social media, uh, emails, text messages. So depending on the proximity of people, if they don't live anywhere near me um, or they don't necessarily know me personally, it'll come through on a, 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 you know, DM on a social media. If someone has had some email contact with me, it might come in on email. If someone knows me a bit more personally. It, uh, good morning, Joe. It is a, a, a text message. And then if it's a local, local, like it was this morning when I saw my neighbor, Roy, who uh, has been reading the book, we bumped into each other on the way to the cafe. I was leaving with my coffee. He was coming in and we had a good chat for 20 minutes. If you are reading the book at the moment, uh, and if, if this is new to you, if you are reading your exceptional life at the moment, um, I would love to know. You don't have to tell me right now, but I'd love to know how you're finding it. Some of you are listening to the audio book. I had a um, uh, a friend or a local, uh, yeah, like a friend, tell me yesterday um, they had been driving for five hours and they listened to five hours straight of the audio book, and he was telling me all the things he was learning and loving and um, all the rest of it. So if you are consuming. Uh, the book in any way at the moment. I would love to know uh, what's sticking for you. What is resonating with you? What is challenging you? What do you disagree with? What do you uh, find that you are learning from the book? Um, that would be great. Um, and if you haven't got it or you just want to pop in and say hello, just pop a little hello. Hey there, Jesse. Got my book a few days ago. Yay, that's great. Um, I think that's awesome. I hope you enjoy it, Game Changer. I really hope you do. Um, enjoy the book and uh, and get something out of it. But today, I want to talk to you all about when things don't go to plan. Uh, oh, good on you, Rhonda. You're loving the audio book. Thank you for your support. I love it. I love it. It was two days nonstop of recording the audio book. So uh, to hear people uh, tell me they love it, I, I love that you love it. The people that recorded the audio book for me were not confident that I could record or read the full book in two days, go to woe. Uh, but those of you that know me, even just a little bit, know that I would have no drama reading a book uh, for two days, start to finish. Um, most audiobooks are recorded in 90 minute segments. If you listen to audiobooks, um, or maybe it's just my ex radio producer ears, I can definitely tell the cuts of when a new recording session has started. I'm listening to Barack Obama's A Promised Land at the moment because the actual book is about this thick and it's been too overwhelming to even start. So I did what many people do and I bought the audio book. And uh, I think I'm about 15% of the way through. And I look at my big hardcover book that's on my bedstand and I go, ha, conquering you, one audio book page at a time. Um, and you might be doing the same with uh, with my book as well. But I do love the old hardcover or paperback combo uh, with the audio book because there's no better feeling than progress, I reckon, a lot of the time. Um, it's a great thing. So today, plans. Good morning, Wendy Stewart. Hope you are fabulous. Um, there is uh, a real ad adaptability happening in the Pierce family this morning. We've had uh, – we have four children and we have – had three children vomiting over the last 24 hours. If you feel a little bit blah at the idea of vomiting, vomit, vomit, vomit. <laughs> Whenever I say the word vomit at the dinner table, kids are like, don't talk about it. But, yes, there's been a lot. And uh, I can tell you that uh, almost two-year-olds vomit a whole lot more than uh, just turned five-year-olds and vomit a whole lot more than just turned uh, or about to turn nine-year-olds. There's a thing. And the adults, touch wood. The adults haven't got it yet and the oldest child, Maya, who's 11, doesn't have it yet and uh, we're just fingers crossed that it's only the young and vulnerable immune systems that get it more than the older. I've had more chiropractic adjustment immune systems. Isn't that right, Joe? Anyway, so um, uh, plants have been changing uh, 
on a, on a basic level, you know, kids that were going to school aren't at school. Poor Sebe hasn't had a wink of sleep in weeks, months, years. Any parents here, uh, or particularly the mums, or particularly those major caregivers, whatever you meant to say in this PC world, um, hasn't slept in ten years. Poor Sebe. Uh, I hope they feel better too and soon, soon Wendy as well, <laughs> for everyone's sake. But it just it it. Just as a reminder that that plans change, uh, I was going to do certain things this morning that I that I didn't, uh, namely just going, getting up early, and going to the cafe to knock out a couple of hours of work before coming home and beginning the day. And these are all I was just talking to Scott at the Great Cafe, which is a few hundred meters from me, Mrs. Birdies, just saying that you know um, our our problems are the most first worldy of first world problems, like. Kids have been vomiting, you know, and it changes your plans. And yes, no one's dying. We're not going through wars. Like, there are not bombs going off down the road. Uh, but you can't help the problems that you have at the time. I do am a big believer that you can create your own challenges in order to start living your exceptional life more on purpose. Sometimes you have to consciously make things harder, whether that's parking further away from the supermarket and walking with two plastic bags unbalanced or no, no, not plastic bags. What do we have these days? Canvas bags. Keep cut bags, whatever you call it. Anyway, non-disposable bags, um, whatever it is. But sometimes we have to consciously make life a bit more difficult. But other times we just have challenges that come up out of nowhere, like kids start vomiting in the middle of the night. Oh, I want to vomit. And it's 12.30 in the middle of the night. You're like, blah, 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 blah. wake up. Yes, I'll get you a vomit bowl or a toilet. Go to the toilet. And then, oh, gosh, there's vomit all over the doona. We missed it. We missed it. These were not on the to-do list or the plans for the day or the middle of the night. Plans for the middle of the night were to sleep. So, as I got a message from Sarah in the middle of the night, message from Sarah last night was, and I quote, might read a whole book tonight because poor Sebe had little Spencer in her arms and he was vomiting every 10 minutes. Uh, but by the end of it, it was just uh, bile, bile, and more bile. For any of those of you that are dry reaching at the thought of vomit, 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 vomit. You got to get used to it when you're a parent of young kids. Um, but you know, reading a whole book, you know, all through the night was not necessarily a part of Sarah's plans and expectations. And I think you can all relate to this. We have expectations that when they are not met, uh, depending on our headspace and our heart space and what's going on at the time. We can, we can go crazy. We can lose it. And I talk about this page 241 of the book. Um, I've kind of uh, spoken a lot about Demartini's ABCDs of negativity, but essentially what it is talking about, I quoted Shakespeare, oft expectation fails and most oft there where most it promises, which is another way of saying uh, expectation is the root of all heartache. Uh, when we've got really big plans or ideals, when they don't come to fruition, it can break our heart the most. We can get angry. We can get aggressive. We can blame others or ourselves. We can feel betrayed. We can criticize. We can challenge. We can be in a state of despair, despondency, or depression. And it can happen. It can happen so often. It can happen when machines don't work, like the car battery goes, the printer runs out of ink, uh, the electricity. Like Think of so many people in Victoria at the moment where the electricity just went bang. And the expectation naturally is that every day the electricity works. Um, and we go to certain emotional places when those expectations aren't met. And so really the purpose of today's video is to ask you, like, where do you go when things don't go to plan? I'm a criticizer. I just get – and a challenger. I'm a, I'm a C. I get really, like – I just get on my high horse. It's just not right. It's just – this is not the way it's meant to be. da 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 da, -da. <laughs> You know, I'm almost so I'm actually a little bit betrayed, a uh, bit victimy, but also actually, as I even say, I get a little bit aggressive, I get a little bit narky. Um, I'm not really a despair, a depressed, a despondent type. I'm an angry, aggressive, blaming, betrayed criticizer who challenges people. <laughs> and anyone that's been around me, you know, in events when things don't go to plan, they can see me today um, cracking it. Uh, Wendy Stewart says, six years ago today, we were in Byron at your exceptional life event. Great weekend. That was six years ago. I actually just found a, um, I actually just found a, a local paper, South Gippsland Sentinel Times uh, newspaper article of me sharing my message. Uh, where? Oh, can I bring it up? Uh, I'm going to see if I can bring up this URL. I'll pop it in the comments. 
Uh, this was about eight years ago, Wendy. I don't know how this came up. But the message the message is old is essentially what we're saying. The message is old, but it's um, also, you know, what's old is new again. Uh, hopefully the message is timeless, shall we say. And that's the whole thing about um, expectations as well. They, You will carry so many, so many um, expectations throughout each day, throughout each month, week, year that are unconscious until something happens to challenge them. Um, and Helen says, I feel like I'm never going to make it to a live event. And it is so true. Like the expectation of a live event, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's intense. It's heavy. And it's like, where do you go? But then it's really, really, really good. It's very powerful to work on expectation because it does make you open yourself up to being more of a, what I like to call a limitless soul. It's like you can roll with the punches of life. You can roll with pandemics. You can roll with uh, grieving. You can roll with uh, major unexpected challenges. Really what I'm saying is you can have perspective. You can have perspective. And and I, I like to, um, you know, on a deeper level, I really love to go to narky, angry, aggressive, criticizing challenger. Like I love it and I love it because I know that I'm not going to go there forever. So, again, I know Wendy Stewart's seen me narky. I know she's seen me in some really just, you know, critical moments. Um, But Wendy will also acknowledge that that is not my forever. Like it's just not me all the time. And that is part of being human. Like we are not so vanilla and placid that we are like that all the time. It's just not the way it is. And when unexpected events strike and they are going to happen for the rest of our lives, it's really important that we do gather a bit of perspective as to how we behave when unexpected events come up. I have been pleasantly surprised with how placid and calm um, I have been um, in the last 24 hours because I am one to get a little bit narky when kids get ill or it gets a little bit full on in the family house. I get a bit, um, (laughs) not military, but I'm just like, I'm just a little bit short with it all. Um, And I think it's really important that we recognize that are these times just are they passing moments or do, do, does it become a bit too standard, like a bit too normal? Like we don't want to be like that all the time. We have to be really conscious of, all right, I'm in a moment where I'm adjusting to new expectations. So in the COVID times, it's like, you know, if it took you six months to adjust, that's completely cool. No worries at all. Others, it took six minutes. Others, they're still adjusting. The question is, um, how are you dealing what expectations are you holding? So Helen Pocock says, I really uh, feel like I'm never going to make it to a live event again. Like I, you know, so some of you that saw the email that came out yesterday, we are doing our wellness summit. Um, uh, it's almost abruptly. We are actually doing a wellness summit on Saturday week. It's our final wellness summit. It is the last wellness summit we will ever do. And uh, really, to be truthful, like, it's a. It's, it's. We have just been very COVID affected. The wellness couch has been very COVID affected. Uh, our whole model as a business was on bringing our podcast to life. We do enough digitally to not be a one hundred to not want to be a one hundred percent digital uh, business at the wellness couch. Uh, we don't do a lot of advertising in terms of bringing ads on the podcasts. We don't do a lot of digital events because it's just not. It's just. It's not in the culture of who we are. And yes, you can argue we're not progressive enough, and we're not. The new normal, we haven't adapted to the new normal. I don't want to adapt to the new normal. I'm not adapting. Sorry, it's not happening. We're doing one last wellness summit on Saturday, June 26, and then we're going to let the world just carry on and maybe in times to come things will come back out again. I do have hopes, ideals that I will get to Ikaria again and that I will go to Sardinia for the first time, and that I I definitely, for those of you that are wondering, I definitely have plans to run an exceptional, create your exceptional life weekend in October. Now, October is my month of running a real life event again with human beings. Um, uh, but I think it is so important. Uh, we're not hosting the summit in real life, Jesse. Sorry, it's digital. <laughs> it's digital. It's it's where it's in your home, Jesse. It's in your home, and it's in my home. Uh, it's in you know I can I can show you here because this is the real world. This is the office corner. 
on the stand-up desk. This is where the wellness summit will be. There's the sleeping quarters, and there's the cot. This is where the wellness summit will be, everybody. That's it, baby. And uh, I'm sure many of you uh, are going to be having your wellness summit in a place just like mine. Um, so I think it's really – this is just – for me anyway, uh, learning about self. Th these times are just such a really good lesson for expectation. So I'll repeat it again uh, from 241 in the book. Good morning to you, Craig. Hope you are well. Um, where do you go when your expectations aren't met? Do you get angry uh, when the battery in the car goes? Do you get aggressive? Do you blame? Do you feel betrayed? Do you get critical? Do you go into challenge? Do you go into despair, depression, or despondence? Demartini has actually now got E's and F's and maybe even G's. Uh, as his IP matures and grows, it's now like the A, B, C, D, E, F, G's of <laughs> negativity. And as Demartini learns more, I'm sure uh, there'll be an A to Z of negativity when our expectations aren't met. But generally, expectations aren't met when we expect others to be more like us, when we expect others to be unlike themselves, when we expect machines to work all the time, when we expect ourselves to be more one-sided, like happy all the time or succeed all the time or win all the time or events run on time all the time, um, when we expect God or a higher power to live outside universal laws. So you know, for any of you that have, um, again, like goals, that you want to happen by a certain time, like they will test your spirit more than most because a lot of the time, in my experience, things don't happen on your time. They happen on God's time, nature's time, the speed of trees, as I like to read in a book called um, The Over... The Over... The Over Story? What is that book? Anyway, what's the thing with... What's the what's the thing of, book, of trees? Is it The Over Story? Anyway... Anyway, um, delete, delete, cancel, cancel that comment. Um, but just be really mindful. Be really mindful of where you go when things don't go according to plan. Be really mindful because the event's already happening. Where do you go here and here when things aren't going according to the script of your exceptional life? It's a canopy, yes, but I think it's called The Story, The Overstory. Anyway, there's a book and I've read it. And I gave it to Bronnie Ware to read and I did acknowledge with Bronnie that it's a little bit slow, but Hugh Jackman read it and loved it. It is a really good book, but it's a really good book if you don't want a book that goes too quickly. It's pretty slow, but it's a good book. It won like the Booker Prize or one of those big book prizes. Um, anyway, folks, I have run out of books, believe it or not, which is a really good sign. I've got 1,500 books arriving on my driveway on Monday. Uh, but if you do order a book, between now and then, um, I will sign it and get to the post office by Monday or Tuesday at the latest. Thank you to everyone that has bought a copy of Your Exceptional Life so far. We are approaching 1,000 books sold, which is really exciting. Um, 3,000 for a bestseller in Australia, but really people are like, oh my gosh, congratulations. I'm like, honestly, I don't feel like we've even started. It's For me, this is the closest thing to having a baby. And uh, anyone here that has had a baby know that the hard work starts not when everyone says congratulations on your baby being born, but when you begin raising that child. And so for me, I'm just in the throes. I'm in that early day roller coaster of raising the book and letting the world know that it's out there. Uh, you are about, I've just had 60 quote cards made, which are those inspirational little square quotes quotes that go on your Instagram feed. I'm having some inspirational videos made at the moment. I've got three of them done already and there'll be 10 others. And they are direct quotes out of the book, which are direct quotes out of 100 Not Out. And they are some really cool ones. Got Charles Eugster and Mimi Kirk and Trevor Hendy just made those three. I've got one being made of Eddie JQ at the moment, the happiest man on earth. Um, so there'll be lots of cool stuff, you know, what we would call in social and shareable content coming out in the next couple of months. So um, if you're loving the message and you want to share it in, in uh, certain ways on social, there'll be some easy ways to um, do that. Um, Nick, uh, Nicola Billy, just received your book and look forward to reading it. Thank you, Nicola. That's very kind of you. Um, Samantha Jinx Butler, hope you are going well. To everyone that's been on this morning, thanks for your engagement. Uh, Damien Christoph loves engagement, loves comments on social. I'll tell him that uh, Thursday morning. It's a good time. Lots of people saying hello. I really appreciate it, guys. Wendy, I popped that link to the South Gippsland Sentinel Times article from 
2013. Um, you're only as old as you feel, I think is what it was called. It's in the uh, it's in the comments there. I hope you can see it. Um, all right, guys, uh, look after yourself. Have a wonderful Thursday, and uh, I look forward to connecting with you again. Take care, and bye for now.